So we are the first company dedicated on the production of green hydrogen and green ammonia. Um, where we are in the hydrogen ecosystem is you have seen a lot of investment happening on the technology side, but very little happening on the production side. And as we are seeing now the demand for green molecules growing, it is time to have a company who can actually provide these molecules. So our first two projects are situated in Paraguay and in Iceland, uh, with the idea that we have about 250 megawatts available in Paraguay. Uh, and in Iceland up to 100 megawatt. If you listen to what the International Energy Agency says, if you listen to you know, a number of in energy investment banks, you know, even the Goldman Sachs of this world, you know, they're calling it the $10 trillion opportunity. You know, the, the goal, the aim is that by 2040, 2050, with hydrogen, you can essentially displace about 20% of oil and gas uh, globally. Nobody is really taking care of this today and we really want to be the accelerator of supplying these green hydrogen and green ammonia molecule in the market today and not in 2030 um, and which is where the disconnect is going to be. Over the, over in this decade what we are seeing is that the, the growth of demand will far outstrip the supply of green molecules. When we created uh, Atom over 12 months ago now, we really looked at figuring out where are the best places in the world where you have stable power, long-term stable power, uh, in large quantities, so that we could really focus on the production itself. Um, and what we have seen is in Paraguay, where you have a large excess of hydroelectric power, in Iceland, where you have a largest excess of geothermal power, it allows us really to accelerate uh, the construction of the um, production units. These projects will come online uh, around 2024 and the intention for us is over the next few months uh, is to get to final investment decision by Q3 this year and this is why uh, we listed the company on the London Stock Exchange uh, in late 2021. So the way you produce hydrogen is you take, you take water molecules through an electrolyzer and you would end up with hydrogen on one hand and oxygen on the other hand. Now that hydrogen can be used in different ways, so either itself as a fuel uh, into a fuel cell or you can actually further process it to become either ammonia, which will be used uh, in uh, transport such as shipping or in fertilizer, or you could actually use it to transform it into e-methanol uh, again, you know, methanol can also be used as a fuel and even in aviation. Um, or the last way to use uh, methanol and ammonia is actually as a way to transport hydrogen because the energy density of hydrogen uh, is pretty low. So it is much better to transform hydrogen into ammonia and then transport the ammonia to a destination where that molecule is transformed back into hydrogen and used uh, into the system. So for example, in the Icelandic project, the idea is to produce first ammonia to transport it into Europe, into the UK, where it will be used as hydrogen. Actually, it's quite exciting for us. You know, we've been saying all along that once we start on these projects, you know, the 250 megawatt uh, pro potential in Paraguay, even on the mobility side, it would actually prove on the ground that we are serious and then it will give us a lot more traction. Um, and what happened as a consequence is that Ende directly reached out to us telling us that, hey, you know, we've just finished construction this substation uh, in Vegeta, um, which is right in the heart of where all of the fertilizer importers are. And it made total sense for us to actually accelerate uh, and develop a further project right in the heart of our customers. Um, and obviously 60 megawatt is not insignificant um, and this project is going to be extremely fast-tracked uh, in order to uh, take advantage of the opportunity today and it, you know, it would hopefully lead to even more projects. So we, um, I think for us it's, it's a great demonstration um, that our strategy has been the right one and our ability to move fast uh, and to adapt uh, compared to, let's say, a larger company, uh, is proving right. The 
the Atom team is quite complementary. We've got Myros, who come from the International Energy Agency's hydrogen unit. James Spalding, who used to run Itaipu, the dam which will supply the electricity in Paraguay. Many investors, NOAA chairman Peter Levin, who's got an incredible track record of delivering not only energy companies, but also infrastructure companies. And we are that intersect. So his guidance has been crucial to ensure that we can deliver faster, better and cheaper than anybody else. The environment is there, the demand is there, the supply isn't. And what Atom has is the ability to move extremely fast. It has the access to some of the cheapest power in the world, uh, in some of the best locations in the world, which allows us to produce hydrogen and ammonia at some of the lowest cost in the world. From an investment point of view, you know, it's like you've read data is the new oil, you know, electrification, the Teslas of this world is where, you know, where the growth can come from. Well, what we have seen, unfortunately, over the past few months is that, you know, oil is the new oil. And what you have is a sector which can replace 20% of all of the oil produced in the world. That's one side. The other side is really on the progress on the technology side. What made the difference 15 years ago in the solar space? It's really this confluence of technology, demand and regulation. And we really are here today where the regulation has moved extremely fast. You have countries, you know, the European Union, for example, has given 80 billion euro of uh, support to accelerate the growth of hydrogen. Um, the UK alone just came out with its new strategy around hydrogen. You, you really have this, this movement going extremely fast into growing um, that economy. So as a management team, you know, we are incredibly excited about the future of Atom. Not, not only are we on track with what we say during the IPO, but actually we are seeing a number of projects accelerating. So future is looking great, but you know, you're going to have to watch this space. <music>